desire come from to own your own hotel company and you know to make this first hotel purchase in the first place? Where did this desire come from? Well, I was um, born and raised in New York City's Lower East Side, where so many immigrants lived, mostly from Ireland, mostly from Italy, and then from Eastern Europe. My dad's parents came from Russia, Belarus, and my mom's parents came Austria-Hungary. And that's where I grew up with my brother on the Lower East Side. I was the first one in my family to go to college. I went to Cornell University, the School of Hotel Administration. I went through ROTC, and when I graduated, I went right into the Army overseas in Asia and Europe. I did my basic training at Fort Bragg, the home of the 82nd Airborne. When I came back, I went to work where my dad worked at the Waldorf Astoria. He was a sign painter. But he thought that I would enjoy the hospitality business. And that's where I started. I started at the Waldorf Astoria. I referred to it as the Waldorf Hysteria. That's where I started. And from there, it's a long story, but I wound up in Acapulco managing a beautiful hotel. There was a change in the presidency and the new president immediately passed a law that said that only Mexican citizens could own 51% of real property. My boss at that time owned an entire hotel, a beautiful property. He was forced to, to sell 49%. As soon as the Mexican company took over, I was fired. I drove back to California, read the paper the next morning and read about Disney doing something very special in Orlando. I drove to Burbank, Disney's headquarters. I interviewed for a job. They said they would do the hiring in Orlando. I'm sorry, that they would do the hiring in New York City, and then we would go to Orlando. So I drove from California to New York, stayed with my parents in their little apartment, went to a hotel and was interviewed. Within a week, Disney said, you're hired. We would love you to be our administrator of hotel planning and we would like you to come to California and work with the architects. I couldn't, afford, I couldn't afford to fly, so I drove. On my way, I was running out of money and was afraid I wouldn't, ab wouldn't be able to buy gas. So I discovered that if I drafted the large trucks, I probably didn't have to use any gas at all. They would just suck me along. And so I started drafting this very large semi. Unfortunately, he made a very sharp turn and I went off the mountain in Santa Rosa, New Mexico. Can you see my scar? I can, yes. 42 stitches. I almost got killed. But God was with me. A tree stump stopped my little Volkswagen from rolling all the way down the mountain. I was taken to the hospital. I spent three days there and then let my friends at Disney know that I had been delayed. And they said, well, fly on down and we'll pick you up at the airport. And they did. And that was the beginning of my stay with Disney. After a while, when construction was going very nicely in Orlando for Disney World, they flew me to Orlando and I continued my work there. And so that was how I wound up at Disney. Now, I had been fired from four other jobs before Disney fired me also. <laughs> All right. Disney, after I'd been there 
from 68 to 71, when Dizzy World opened, I thought I had done a good job. I was called in by my boss's boss for a meeting and I was so excited. I thought finally I was going to get a nice increase. I did not. Instead, I was told that for a number of reasons, I just did not fit the mold of a Disney executive. Wow. What I said at that time was ridiculous, but I was angry. And I said, you said I don't fit the mold. Is it because my ears are too small? and I don't look enough like Mickey. I won't repeat what the gentleman who was talking to me said, but anyway, he said, you're fired. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to, I said, I cannot work for anybody else because all I wind up doing is getting fired. So maybe I should do something myself and that's, when I decided to buy that little motel. <clears throat> Absolutely amazing. So that's how it happened. I mean, it wasn't a dream I had. It wasn't something that I was planning. It just happened. Absolutely amazing. So, uh, so after hitchhiking across the, the northeast of America and um, really setting up uh, the, the business, from those humble beginnings, rows and hotels and resorts, you know, now reportedly has 7,000 guest rooms across eight hotels in Orlando. I mean, that's just, that's just phenomenal. C can you even begin to tell us the secret of your success? Well, first, let me share this with you. My two granddads, when I was about five years old, sat down and had a conversation with me. They said, in very thick Eastern European accents, Wojciech, you have something very special in your genes. You're gonna be very successful. And I said, oh, thank you, thank you. But we want to give you some advice. Never, never, never borrow any money. Because we did, and during the depression, we lost everything. I go to bed that night in our little bedroom I shared with my brother and my mom always tucked us in and when she was tucking me in she said Harris why aren't you wearing your pajamas why are you wearing your jeans oh because my two granddaddies said I had something very special in my jeans <laughs> no no different kinds of jeans she tried to explain to me but I didn't understand and so that was the beginning. The seed was planted that I had something special in my genes, but I should never borrow money. Well, when I purchased the little quality inn, I had to assume a mortgage of two and a half million dollars. At the International Inn, I paid the mortgage off in five years with the help of the bank sharing that reduction with me. And so here I was, suddenly the owner of two hotels. And slowly but surely, our little company grew. We added it on and added on and built some new properties. And before I knew it, we had 4,000 rooms. And then we continued because I believed that Orlando would be a wonderful destination, not only for the leisure traveler, but for the convention delegate also. But we needed a convention center if we were going to be successful in that market. So I worked very, very hard with some friends of mine to make sure that we passed a tourist tax whose sole purpose would be to generate funds to build a convention center. When the convention center was finally built, I purchased the acreage on either side of the convention center where I built the Rosen Center and the Rosen Plaza. In time, we built Rosen Shingle Creek. 
in time, 15 years ago, I decided to pay off all of my debt and look up to heaven and tell my two granddaddies I didn't have any debt. And that's how it happened. So we have close to 7,000 rooms. We don't have a penny of debt. And I must tell you that that is what's keeping us alive right now. If we had debt, we probably would be foreclosed and would no longer be in business. So God has been watching me all of these years.